Hi everybody, JB here for Just TCG and welcome to our new series, Beginner's Guide to Hearthstone. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, there's quite a lot of Hearthstone content out there, but not an awful lot of beginner friendly Hearthstone content. And the idea of this series is just to help people that may have heard of Hearthstone. It's been around for a while now, but might not be familiar with uh, exactly how it works. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the beginning, we'll just go through the tutorials, because the tutorials themselves are very good. They also have a lot of subtle lessons that you can learn. So I'll walk those through, walk you through those. But yeah, let's get started. Free cards. Who doesn't love free cards? Oh, a new challenger. It's Gina Proudmore, the maid. Who will accept this challenge? <laughs> oh, the scourge of Elwyn. Hogger the gnome. Gather round, gather round. Right, so in Hearthstone, there are nine classes that you can play. Right now, we only have access to one and that's just for the tutorial series, and that's Jaina, the mage. Um, that's, as I said, nine classes. Each one is represented by a famous Warcraft hero. Uh, I don't know a lot about the uh, World of Warcraft lore, but we'll get to the others in a bit. But for the meantime, Hogger obviously is not one of the nine possible classes. He's just a tutorial mob, really. So yeah, Basic idea of Hearthstone, play minions to and use it to attack your opponent, deal enough damage, and you win. Uh, players usually start on 30 life, but for the sake of this tutorial, Hogger starts on 10. Bring it on. <laughs> I need some minions to fight for me. So yeah, this just shows that you just play your minions from your hand. There's three numbers here. The one in the top left-hand corner is the cost. The one in the bottom left-hand corner is the attack. And the bottom right-hand corner is health. Minions may also occasionally have this uh, sort of word underneath them. That represents their uh, minion type. And this is relevant to some cards. Unlike in Magic, your, health, you don't, your minions don't get restored to full health at the end of your turn. So any damage they take is permanent. But they can be healed up by certain powers and healing effects to go back to full health. Job's done. Your move, no. Well, at least you didn't play a card this turn. <laughs> yeah, so when you go down to zero health, you lose the game. Pretty self-explanatory. Another minion, just what I needed. Okay, so what we could do is, well, we're going to play the raised blood friend raptor first, and just like the our uh, one drop had the murloc type, blood friend raptor has the beast type. I've got you right where I want you. So minions must wait to turn to attack. It's called Summoning Sickness in Magic Gathering. In Hearthstone, it's just, they just have to wait. They fall asleep. Um, so attack with your minion. You could just go straight to face, but you. But a big thing about Hearthstone is board control. And you really want to, unless you can like kill them on that turn, you want to have control of the board. So even though we could attack face here, this minion could kill our blood friend raptor so we actually want to attack with our murloc raider and crush the knoll like so two cards oh, he must have been saving one Should I attack a gnome or Hogger himself? Right, so the situation we've got here is a bit different. 
This blood friend raptor is dying anyway because these two will attack it. So there's actually no point in using the blood friend raptor to attack one of the nolts. So I'm going to play this river crocolisk, also a beast. And then I'm actually going to attack directly for three. Forcing these two to trade in with this, but I've done an extra three damage to Hogger. Whereas if I just attacked one of the Nulls, I wouldn't have got that. I wouldn't have got that three damage in. So I can kill this massive knoll or go for his master. We can't win this turn. And this massive knoll has five attack but only two health. So we actually do just want to do just want to trade here because we're now back to ball position and ball control. And then we'll play this book and Raptor again. Yeah, so spell card. It can only be used once, so I better make it count. On top of minions that you can play, there are also spells. Um each spell is specific to that class. I don't think there's any class the spells in the game at the moment. Um, so yeah, we'll just attack with Blood Ben Raptor and then finish it off with Fireball. And there we go. With you, okay, so we're going to do all the tutorials in this in this uh, how to play Hearthstone video, um, and I'll talk through the decisions in each one because they're actually really key. They're really key to playing Hearthstone. Jaina versus Milhouse Manastor. Expend your mana each turn to, to crush this annoying gnome. Sure. Jaina, prepare to face the mighty Millhouse Mana Storm. I wanted to go first. Yes, so you gain a mana crystal each turn, and also there's a coin flip at the start of the game to decide who goes first. We'll go more into the the actual pre-game in a bit, uh, but yeah, you gain a mana crystal each turn, so it means on turn one we can play our Murloc Raider, on turn two play this Bloodfen Raptor. Having a good mana curve in your deck is really important. What kind of minion is that? <laughs> oh, oh, this card is incredible. Just you wait until I get some more mana. Oh, my mana has been restored. Yeah, so you'll use mana crystals, do refill each turn, and you get an additional one. So it's turn two now. Um, we're just going to attack with this Murloc and then play the Blood Friend Raptor. I'm trying to win this game! Job done. Another mana! <laughs> Here it comes! You know what this feels like? Uh, what? Winning! Duh! So. You'll often have situations like this where you have two options on on a turn. You can either have an option to uh, play something that will impact the board immediately, or play something that will help you later on. Now, in the case here, we actually want to play something that helps now because we currently have board control and we want to maintain board control. So we want to play this raid leader and then next turn maybe look at drawing some cards or playing this fireball 
but for now we just want to get more damage down and consolidate our consolidate our ball control So, it's turn four, and again, we've got a choice. We can either play Arcane and Select and draw two cards, we can play River Crocolisk, or we can play this Fireball. Um, if we play the River Crocolisk, it means we have five damage on the board, and attacking with the Raid Leader will take Middle House Brandstorm down to 12. With the 5 damage on the board and the fireball, it means we don't have lethal next turn. But we want to do something. So, the next thing we want to think about is mana efficiency. And what would be most efficient mana-wise is to play the fireball now, and then on turn 5, play the river crocolisk and the arcane intellect. So we're actually here going to attack for 2 and then fireball his face. It is very hard. So we're here, here we've got another decision. We can spend four mana and play the River Crocolisk and the Bloodfen Raptor, or we can spend five mana and play one of the creatures and Arcane Select, but use all our mana. Assuming we draw, we, we draw something like a four drop or two more two drops or something, or something, we do act, we, there may possibility, be a possibility where we get to use all our mana on turn six. So what we're going to do here is we're going to play our we're going to play our River Crocolis because it doesn't matter which minion we play in terms of getting Millhouse Man Manstorm dead next turn. So we want to play one, the, the minion that has more durability, more health. But before we do that, we actually want to play our game intellect and see what our options are. So nothing's changed in terms of our options. So we're just going to play this River Crocolis and then attack for two. And that's how not to use Fireball. So, there's no need to play any of these cards, we just hit the lethal. And that's the importance of having a good mana curve. Because Milhouse Mana Storm, if you notice, have five cards in this hand and got to play none of them. They probably all cost like more than six mana. So, even though you might look at a card and see it's got 8 mana and think, oh wow, that's a powerful effect, it's useless if you can't play it at all in the game. Next up is Law Walker Cho. Playing all sorts of... Uh, Characters from the Warcraft universe. Jane versus Lord Walker Cho. When minions fight each other, they both take damage. Oh, Jaina, it is good to see you. Lord Walker Cho. Show me what you've learned. I will not hold back. <laughs> good, good. So, you may have noticed that we started with uh, two cards, but Law Show started with three. The reason why is that if you go second, you get uh, you get an extra card in your starting hand. There's something else that happens, but we'll get to that in a bit. I am not 
not all that handy with swords or bows, but I do have many friends. Yes, Lord Walker. So, we could just trade in here with this Murloc Raider, but similar to the situation we had against Hogger, we'd rather go face it and force this Pandaren Scout to trade with our Murloc Raider. So that's what we're going to do. We're then also going to play this Blood Friend Raptor and pass the turn. Job's done. Even a single point of damage can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Oh, very right. Very wise. Very wise. Okay. So, same situation. I am just going to attack for three and force the Shadow Pan Monk to trade with the Blood Friend Raptor. I'm also going to play out the Raid Leads to get an extra point of damage in. And it can also act as a Lightning Rod. Because uh, Shadow Pan Monk might go, might go for the Raid Leader instead, which we're fine with. We have to re recognize that right now we are the aggressive, we are the aggro, and we just want to keep on attacking him and force him to make suboptimal plays. So, we have quite a difficult decision we could just attack here and then play our raid leader the problem being that the raid leader would get killed by the river crocolisk and the river crocolisk will survive the the raid leader is probably therefore better at either coming down later and playing the river crocolisk first or playing it after we've killed the River Crocolisk. We are going to kill the River Crocolisk anyway. Or are we? What we're actually going to do is play our own River Crocolisk and then attack the face directly. Forcing once again this River Crocolisk to trade with the Bloodfriend Raptor and then playing the raid the next turn. Yes, Lord Walker. So, with him playing that spell, it suddenly the tables are turned. And he's now got a 3 3 Pandaren Scout and a 4 3 River Brocolisk. And this is the risk of leaving minions up for your opponent when you're ahead. What we're going to do now, we have to recognize we're actually slightly behind on the board. So, we have to now make the slightly suboptimal plays and take trades and take some trades. So, Blood Friend Raptor is going to kill the River Brocolisk. And then we're going to play the Raid Leader and the Murloc Raider and pass the turn. Yes, Lord Walker. Ah, <laughs> you cannot reach me. For now, after I destroy your troops, I'm coming for you. Okay, so we've got six mana and all our cards are playable. But we can't now kill Law Walker Cho until we've dealt with all his minions. Luckily, this is quite easy because we've held on to this arcane explosion. So what we're going to do firstly is that we can draw with arcane intellect and then play arcane explosion. So we want more information. Magma Rager is terrible and should never be taken seriously. Because um, even though it has that 5 attack, it only has 1 health. So it's a bit of a trap. So what we're going to do, we're going to play this Arcane Explosion. To deal with the Pandaren Scouts. And then take down a Shadow Pan Monk with our Murloc Raider. And force the Lord Walker Cho back to Earth with a thump. So this introduces the mechanic of Battlecry. Battlecry minions do something special when you play them. 
Here we go. And here's our version. Here's our Battle Cry minion, Norris Engineer. Battle Cry draw a card. So when I so it basically reads, when Norris Engineer enters play, you draw a card. Now, we have a choice. We can either play the 4-mana Oasis Snapjaw as a 2-7, the 3-mana Magnum Rage as a 5-1, or the Nightblade as a 4-4 with the Battle Cry ability, dealing 3 damage to the enemy hero. Because we have exactly 5 mana left, we can't play more than one card, and we want to be as efficient as possible with our mana, meaning using up as much of it as possible. So we're going to play the Nightblade. So, remember what I said about Magma Rager, Magma Rager being a trap, with it being a 5-1, so even though that 5 attack, it means that this lowly 1-1 one -one can kill it. Observe. Oh, if you're sure. Now, we know Law Walker Cho at this point plays a card which gives all his minions plus 2, plus 2. So even though you think that we want to just hit the face, we don't actually want that card to be useful again with the Voodoo Doctor. So we're using the information that our opponent has given us, and we're actually just this going we're actually just going to kill the Voodoo Doctor. We're then gonna play the Oasis Snapjaw. And there is six damage on the table, meaning that if we play this back barrager, even though it's a five one, and even though the one is terrible, it does mean that we have lethal damage on the board next turn with this fireball you are very strong jaina <laughs> so we have 5 9 11 17 damage on the in our possession and lawwork chose on 17 do not fall for the trap of killing the voodoo doctor at this stage just win the game this one's mine. <laughs> you are a true Okay, an and honor, that is Law Walker Cho defeated, and we are on to the next contestant, King Mukla. King Mukla. Don't understand the card? Mouse over it. Indeed. Nice. So. Get him while he's alone. So, we now start with three cards in our hand. Our opponent starts with four. That is the normal hand size. Three if you go first, four if you go second. Again, there's still something coming up. We'll explain that in a bit. Why are these monkeys throwing bananas at me? So, this is a this is a spell. Bananas give a friendly minion plus one plus one. What we're going to do with this particular banana is actually put it on our Stone Tusk Boar. Now, Stone Tusk Boar has an ability called Charge, which means it can attack immediately. Think of, say, Haste in Magic the Gathering. With this banana, the two one becomes a two two meaning that it can kill the crazy monkey and still live. You crazy monkeys. Ow. 
Is that all you've got, Mukla? Just barrels? <laughs> so, we've got an option here. We can just play the Wolf Rider and then trade one of our minions into the Crazy Monkey and the other one to the face. What we're actually going to do, though, is we're actually going to play this River Crocolisk and then use the banana that was given to us to make sure that whatever minion we use to kill the Crazy Monkey actually survives. Therefore, having three minions for Mukla to deal with instead of two. And now we have the opportunity to play the Wolf Rider and the Voodoo Doctor. So we're going to play the Wolf Rider first. And then we're going to play the Voodoo Doctor. Now, Battle Cries restore two health. And that can be to either yourself, your hero, or one of your minions. And we're going to choose to heal the River Crocolis. Because we know now that Mukla has an ability to deal two damage to all your minions. Okay. So, I can finish off Mukla. so, the Silverback Patriarch has an ability called Taunt. Enemies must attack this minion. So, you must attack and kill the minions with Taunt before you can go for any other non-Taunt targets. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to play the raid leader here because it will give all our minions plus one attack use our wolf rider to kill the silverback patriarch and then deal six damage with our river crocolis and our voodoo doctor So, you may have thought there that I played in, I just played in Stomp and everyone died as a result. However, there was no... The worst play you can make in Hearthstone is doing nothing. And, some, and you can't be afraid of certain cards, but you, can, but you can play around them. However, in this instance, there was no way to play around because whatever minion I played was going to die to Stomp anyway. So what we're going to do here is we're going to play the novice engineer first, and then think of where to go from go go from there. I hope you like my invention. So we have our own taunt minion now in the form of Senjin Shieldmaster, one of the best taunts in the game for absolute beginners. So if you ever build a deck, I highly recommend you put this guy in your in, in your first ever Hearthstone deck. There's one of the heal effects we talked about, although it's not a real heal effect in the game. So, what we're going to do here is we are going to kill the Silverback Patriarch with our Novice Engineer, because that means we can do more damage to King Mukla. And then we're going to play the Wolf Rider and the Gold Shift Footman. We'll obviously attack with the Wolf Rider because it has charge, and then pass the turn back over. No need to play this Fireball just yet. So, big, big creature, six mana, ten, ten. 
Uh, quite scary. Let's see what we're going to do. First things first, we're going to draw two cards with Arcane Intellect. So, what do we what do we do from here? You might be thinking that we just try and kill the this big brother by attacking both our minions and him and then playing fireball. But the beauty of taunt means that Mukla has to attack one of these taunt minions every turn before he can attack you. So what we're actually going to do here instead is hit him in the face to put him down to nine, play the blood friend raptor, ready for next turn when the blood blood friend raptor is almost guaranteed to survive because he's already played two copies of stomp and then hit with the fireball for the remaining six points of damage. <laughs> well, barrel toss didn't hit <laughs> the correct target. But so yeah, here we go. We're going to attack with Bloodfen Raptor and the Goldshift Footman, leaving Mukta's Big Brother alone and winning the game. <laughs> And there we go. More cards. Next man up, Hemet Nessingwary, the hunter. I think he's a hunter in the Warcraft lore anyway. He's not the hero he's not the hero that represents the hunter class in Warcraft, however, that's someone else. Jaina versus the one, the only, Hemet Nessingwary. Kill his minions or he'll overwhelm you. Well, are you a pretty lass? Watch your tongue. Then, nobody talks to old Hemet like that. Ha! I go first. But I get an extra card. Yeah, oh, spoken. good, because you'll need it. Spoken about already, when you go second, you get an extra card. You want to get something else, but... Again, it hasn't been brought up yet. I was stalking the great tiger, Bangalash. It's feast hunting time! It is indeed, except this beast is going to kill this guy. We want to get, we want to get, um... We want to get him, his minions off the board start off with because we're going to second we need to be more controlling I have some tricks of my own dwarf Introducing hero powers, the sort of the defining feature of Hearthstone, really, um, that separates it from Magic the Gathering. Each class has its own unique hero power, and the mage is no different. The mage has fire blast, hero power, deal one damage. The hunter, well, Hemet necessary, has shotgun blast, deal one damage, but the actual hunter's ability is something a bit different, and we'll showcase that another time. With the only play being to use the hero power, all hero powers that we can use cost two, by the way. So there we go. Job done. <laughs> Shotgun. It's beast hunting time. One health, <laughs> a perfect target. So we have three options. We can play the Wolf Rider and hit him for three and then see him die to either the Crazed Hunter or the Hero and or the Hero Power. Play the Raid Leader, do nothing, and then he dies to the Crazed Hunter and the Hero Power. Or we play the Gold Shift Footman, kill the Crazed Hunter and pass the turn. That third play gives us the best, best possible board state, so we're going to go with that. Ready for action! 
Action! Tell me, have you read me book, The Green Hills of Stranglethorn? Handle it! So, again, turn four, and we've got a few plays here that we can make. With the, with the raid leader on the field, we have the option of playing the Stone Tusk Boar, attacking with the Stone Tusk Boar, finishing off with the Hero Power, then attacking with the Gold Shift Footman. We also have the opportunity of playing the Sentient Shieldmaster and then just passing the turn. But this means that our Gold Shift Footman will die next turn, so you've got to think these things through. Because it's the more manner efficient play, and because Sentient Shieldmaster has such good stats, that's the play we're going to go for, and then we're going to attack directly with the gold shift footman but we have to appreciate that we're we're being slightly risky leaving the raid leader out knowing that there may be a charge minion on the horizon and you can't use your hero power because you have no man maybe i should go back to writing what do you want So, there's actually a really good play here where we can um, use all five of our mana. So what we're going to do is, firstly we're going to play Arcane Explosion in order to deal one damage to each creature killing the Raid Leader. We'll then use our Hero Power to finish off the Frostwolf Grunt and then play our Stone Tusk Boar and get him for one. Need a new scarf. Jam! Bow down before my huge bug creature! I need to find a way to neutralize that thing. So, introducing one of the best spells for beginner mages, Polymorph. Transform a minion into a 1 1 sheep. What it also doesn't tell you is that it loses all abilities. Taunt, Battle Cry, Death Rattle we might go to in a, later on. Everything. So, observe as the 3 6 becomes a 1 1. And then the great thing about it being 1 1 sheep is that it can just die to Fire Blast and we can attack for 4 more damage. So, we have a, sh a Shenzhen Shieldmaster to deal with now. However, this is actually dealt with quite easily. What we're going to do is we're going to play the River Crocolisk. We're going to play the... Thanks for bringing me a wee snack. I love when he, whenever a beast is played he says something. It's also really annoying to commentate over. We're then going to play the Raid Leader. To give our minions plus one attack then we're going to use our remaining two mana to deal a damage to the shenjin shield master and our four five search engine will kill his three four engine no need to play the polymorph no So, remember what I said earlier about when you know you have lethal, go for the face instead of messing about with creatures, or minions even. Now, it might not seem obvious at first, but we do actually have lethal. The reason why is because we have Wolf Rider with charge. And this means that instead of with the raid leader, he has four attack instead of three meaning that we can deal 9 damage with our minions and then the 10th with our hero power.
and another victory. And more cards. Reckless Rocketeer's not quite as good. And that's the end of your safari, Nessing Wary. And our final mission is against Illidan Stormrage. One of the most annoying champions in Heroes of the Storm. Jane versus Illidan Stormrage. This fight is totally not fair. Blame the terrible game designers. Not a problem. You are not prepared. I don't know. I just played five missions. <laughs> right. So we go second again. It's not shown it, so I'm just going to say it now. Um. If you go second in Hearthstone, not only do you get an extra card in your hand, cards that cost one mana. This will be fun. you also get a coin that gives you ex an extra mana for that turn only. Uh, really useful. Um, but that doesn't happen in these missions, so we're just going to pass the turn. So yeah, weapons um, lose your ability when you attack. Mages have no weapons. Just putting that out there. So we have a choice. We can either kill this Naga Myrmidon with our hero power, or play this 2-3 with a Procolisk. Uh, looking at this hero power, summon two 2-1 two minions. We are going to actually not kill this Naga Myrmidon and instead play the River Crocolisk. Now, it, this River Crocolisk still dies to the Naga Myrmidon and the Warglaive of Azenoth. However, it's effectively saving us three damage. So we're going to play that. So, turn three, and we could play the Wolf Rider and just sack straight for three. However, what we're going to do instead is we're actually just going to play this Voodoo Doctor, heal to health, and then kill the Naga Myrmidon with our hero. All about getting board control. Who shall be next to taste my blades? Of Man, this guy loves talking about Azanoth. Hero power. It's so strong. You know nothing of power. So, turn four, and we've got a few decisions to make. Do we play the Golgi Footman and use our hero power to kill one? Do we just use our hero power to kill one? Do we play the Wolf Rider and attack for three? What we're actually going to do is play just the Sen Senjin Shieldmaster because it requires not only both the flames to attack the Senjin and using the second Warglaive to kill it. It also means that it, it results in an empty board, so if he uses Hero Power again, he has two, just two flames instead of four. So that's what we're going to do. We have to appreciate we're not in control of this game right now. Also, Fireball should always be hitting the Shenzhen. So, a small reprieve. What do we do here? We want to get as many minions on the board as possible. That way, 
we don't just sort of be vulnerable to one removal spell because we know he's playing fireball i'm sure he's playing other removal spells so what we're going to do instead of just playing the night blade we're actually going to play the sentient shield master and the gold shift but the taunts will really help us in protecting our health because we st we still haven't wrestled control of the game just yet but we're getting there. Sure thing. Okay. So at this point, we've got two options. We're obviously going to attack before, but do we play the 2 3 drops or do we play the 1 6 drop? And at this point, you've got to use mats. So if we play the 2 3 drops now, we're dealing 3 damage now and then 8 damage next turn. So that's 11 damage over 2 turns, assuming they both survive. Whereas with the Reckless Rocketeer, we're dealing 5 damage now and then 5 damage next turn again for 10 damage. So what we're actually going to do this turn is play the 2 3 drops. Because that will deal more damage in the long run. Next turn, we then have a choice between Reckless Rocketeer and Nightblade, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Because things may change. For not a time, I will not be touched by rabble such as you. Five, eight, nine. Nightblade is 12. Reckless Rocketeer is 14. So we can either deal 14 damage or Xaxes. We're going to go for Xaxes because why not? And that is that. And we get Marin the Fox because we logged in at a certain time. I'm not entirely sure what the what the unlock conditions are for him. And we get a card pack, because why not? Introducing daily quests. Each day you'll get a card quest to complete and when you complete it you get a reward it's usually gold sometimes it's a pack and this one is a pack you can unlock new heroes in practice mode so what do you do next so what you need to do next is go to solo adventures and unlock the other eight heroes and the way you do that is defeating every single one of them to unlock heroes you'll need to defeat them Challenge your favorite hero first. So first thing you'll want to do is unlock all the heroes. So challenge them in order. It does or any order really. Personally, I choose Uther the Paladin. Uther's quite strong. Um that's like sort of beginners what sort of the beginner recommendation is. Uh I personally think it's Hunter for new players, but Uther's a good choice as well. So, first thing you want to do is unlock all nine heroes. Then you want to get them to level 10. I'm going to do that between episodes. And then in the next episode, depending on what the daily quest is, we're going to show you some good old beginner decks for certain classes. And really introduce... And the aim of the series is to introduce each class individually, show you sort of the ideas behind them, to help you with your deck building and your future Hearthstone play. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this guide on how to play Hearthstone. If you want to see more content like this and for other TCG games, including Magic the Gathering, Pokemon TCG, and Duel Links Yu-Gi-Oh, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications. If you want to see more content like this in the future, remember to give this video a like 
it really helps get my content out there so that more people can can view it but in the meantime i have been jb for just tcg thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you in the next episode